Wait a moment. This isn't a furry visual novel. Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Heroes Advent. You guys really love this series, and you know what? I do too. So the last place we left off, we were actually just joining Alex back in his lab. He's got some, I guess, some tests to run. Let's see how that goes. Um, I might go back to this one shortly. I want to see what what happens. Um, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get a good run. You know, I'm trying to get like one of the best runs you can. I want a good ending. I want a good ending on this on this run. I do. <laughs> so I'm kind of dipping my toes into the mistakes that you can make. So guys, please don't get upset at me if I suddenly decide to go back and do the better route. Because uh, I want to get a good ending in this one. <laughs> but anyway, guys, please sit back and enjoy. Let me entertain you for the next 20 minutes and let's jump right in. Alarm Chan, you're up. All right, let's go. <clears throat> okay. The Lynx went to his computer and started typing. The wall next to him opened up into a passageway, which led into a large room inside. There were various shelves with books and tools across the room, and on the back side was a larger computer. He walked up to the screen and began typing something on the flat panel beneath. He didn't notice at first, but the wall behind you had already slid open, revealing another hidden pathway. How many hidden places does he have? Ooh. Oh my god. Alright then. Bring out the clones! He followed him through the narrow hallway, which took you to a chamber filled with rows of large cyl cylinder glass tanks. As the light shone through the room, you found most of them empty, while others were completely opaque. Ooh, the chambers of the... The birth chambers of the Primarchs, perhaps? W what are these? Testing chamber. This is where I study my subjects. He led you to an open stasis tank. Now, strip and go inside, he said nonchalantly. Uh, huh? Your ears are still functional. Don't act like I misspoke. Collecting tubes cannot process samples with impurities, namely your outfit and any accessories you carry about. So, strip. You gulped, eyeing Max for help, who only gave you a small nod. It seems like you have no choice. Just, just don't look, okay? Sure, if it makes you comfortable. You made sure both of them weren't looking when you took off your clothes and set them aside. You hesitantly entered the tube as it closed, forcefully, and some sort of liquid began to fill flood in. Try to relax, unless you enjoy drowning. W w wait wait The liquid already rose to your hip as panic set in. You managed to hit the glass a few times before you were entirely submerged. Before you were out of breath, a tube and mask appeared out of nowhere and attached themselves to your face, feeding you some kind of warm fluid. You were able to breathe again, but at the same time you felt increasingly drowsy, and everything became a blur to you soon after. I think it's that, I guess it's that, that pink, heavily oxygenated fluid that I've read about. Man, I've read that breathing. That is very similar to feeling like you're drowning. You managed to force your eyes open a few times, but you couldn't see much in the darkness. It was cold. It was also cold, like you were afloat in space, and it stayed that way for a while. Eventually, you felt warmth again as your senses slowly came back to you. You sat up again, realizing you were already back at your dorm room. Oh, dear. Yeah, it looks like he really is. Oh, never mind. Never mind. I thought it was the human dorm room. You could see the balcony door ajar, where Max was outside, probably enjoying the night view of the city. He seemed to notice as you got out of bed. Ah, Cassian, you're finally awake. Uh, y yeah, w what happened? You stretched a bit as you stood up. Alex took a few samples from your body and scanned you. S samples Yeah, like some byproducts and other bodily fluids. My, my, w what You quickly groped your body to see if anything was out of place. Heh, <laughs> don't worry. I know it sounds strange, but he's doing it properly and as ethically as possible. Well, I hope he didn't do anything else to my body, at least. You went to his side of the balcony. Hmm, there was something quite peculiar. W which, wa which was? N nothing. Max! <laughs> Just teasing you. He chuckled and let out a long sigh. I is everything okay? Oh, nothing. It's just, I wish this day would have gone better, you know? I was, su was supposed to be a simple errander with low risk. I it's alright, Max. We don't really know what fate has in store for us. I mean, just look, for, just look at me. I don't even belong to this world, and yet, here we are. Well, you're right, but that's not the only thing. I... Ugh. I feel bad about what I said to Ray. I know it's logical, but... You don't know if it's really his fault or not? Exactly. I just took the first thing that came to mind. The shield was fine from before, and I wanted to trust him. I really do. But something just told me otherwise. It's always been like this for a while now. Hmm. You sighed silently, unsure what to tell him, so you decided to stand by his side for a while. I guess I will apologize to him tomorrow. That said, I might be paranoid, but what if we actually destroyed the sacred tree unintentionally or not? W 
Well, I wouldn't know myself, but I don't think it'd be that bad, Max. There must have been a reason as to why it happened. You said that you wanted to trust him, right? So maybe you could find a reason to do so. I suppose. He seemed to think for a moment before letting out a long sigh. I'll try. Thank you, Cassian. You're welcome, Max. You said, feeling your tail flicking against his as he gave you a head pat. Oof, fucking head pats. Well, now that you're fine, I should get going. I have patrol duty tomorrow. Ah, uh, okay. Sleep well, all right. Tomorrow we'll stop by Alex's again to take a look at the result. Then we'll go on patrol together. Sounds like a plan. Mm-hmm. See you tomorrow, Cassian. He said while closing the door. See you, Max. See ya. You stayed at the balcony for a bit longer, enjoying the night scenery and the fresh air. But it didn't take long for you to feel exhausted again. I guess I'll skip shower today. I'll do that first tomorrow. You muttered to yourself as he crashed into bed, slowly drifting to sleep after a while. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. -mm -mm. Ooh, what do we got? You woke up to the sound of the alarm. Your legs still felt exhausted from yesterday, and you could barely open your eyes. Ugh, what is it that I'm gonna do again today? Oh, patrol duty with Max, that's right. And check on Alex's results, I, I think. You slowly prepared yourself for today's errands. You made your trip to the tavern and had your fr and had your free breakfast before looking around for Max. You saw the canine doing his usual routine on the field outside the guild. How come he still has that much energy after yesterday? You're quite baffled seeing as how he's still jumping around before his usual stretching. Should you join him or watch from the side? Hmm. Woo, what's this? Oh. Join him. He decided to join him. After all, just a little stretch wouldn't hurt, right? Good morning, Max. Oh, hey. Good morning, Cassian. Suddenly a tiger pops out from Max's back. Oh, hello, boys. A lot of abs in this, uh, in this, uh, VN. I love it. <laughs> morning, Cassian. Eh? eh? Morning, I didn't see you there. Well, isn't he, a, isn't he a rogue? That's kind of the point. How rude! Just because I'm thinner than Max here doesn't mean I'm invisible, you know. Ah, uh, I, I mean, I, I thought Max is alone here. I guess his body blocked you from the view. Hmm, well, maybe that's because I have a flexible body. There, there. Let's finish up our warm-up, warm okay? We need to patrol today. Best not to waste any time. You joining, Cassian? Y yeah, but can I have a lighter stretch? My body still aches from yesterday. You notice the tiger smirking at you. <clears throat> Sorry about that, guys. Well, how about you watch me and copy my movement? I'll try to do some easier movements. Sounds good. <laughs> I'll join, too. Are you sure? I'm gonna do some basic moves. Wouldn't you prefer something advanced by yourself? Nah, it's fine. I need it for the cooldown, too, you know. Alrighty, let's sit. Let's go, then. Take off your clothes, Cassie, and or they'll be soaked in sweat. Ah, uh, 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 alright. Hmm. I wonder what we got in store here. You did as he said and got into position. You watched Max and tried your best to copy his movement. It's quite simple as advertised, just a few hand and feet movements like jabbing and kicking at the air. After a few sets, you could already feel tougher as your, as your jabs and kicks became sharper and steadier. This one's the last set. Get ready. Max said as he demonstrated the last few moves, which looked like a sequence of different kicks. It looked like something you'd see on TV, although it wasn't too difficult to follow. That said, you were still struggling a little with your, with your sore muscles, whereas Toby followed his moves a lot more gracefully, almost in sync with the canine even. His flexible body really makes things easier for him. You could feel the sharpness of his kicks, like whoever on the other end of it would get knocked out and would get knocked out before they knew it. You let it a long sigh while catching your breath. Good work, Cassian. You too, Toby. Max gave you a sh Max gave you a shoulder pat and rubbed Toby's head. Heh, it was easy. Now time to stretch. Do you mind doing it on your own, Toby? I need to help Cassian with his. Eh, but Usually I do it with you. I know, but Cassian here is a beginner. I need him to guide. I need to guide him through it. I need to guide him through it, or he'll sprain himself. I'm sure he can stretch on his own, right, Cassian? Toby, you're just trying to cop a feel, aren't you, buddy boy? I'm on to you. No, he's my wolf. He's m what, the Malamute. Yeah, he's a Mal. I think he's a Malamute. The tiger asked nonchalantly, but you could feel his glare upon you. Well, I guess I can. Are you sure, Cassian? Relax, Max. He's a big boy. I'm pretty sure he can stretch. It's not like it's his first act time exercising, right? All right, but I'll keep my eye on him just in case. Do as you wish. Now help me with my leg. Mm. 
Toby, you're a sneaky one. Oh, well, it makes sense. You sighed to yourself as Max tended to Toby for the time being. You tried to remember the cooldown stretch taught to you by your PE teacher years ago. It wasn't the best, and you probably aren't doing it correctly either, but it still somewhat helped you with your muscle cramps. You looked over to Max, who was pushing and bending Toby's feet upwards. Even though it's a real stretch move that you've seen somewhere before, it still felt embarrassing to you, especially when it's, as fle it's a flexible person like Toby. You couldn't help blushing as his legs got pushed pretty far back. Both of their huffing and groaning made the whole thing rather... questionable. I'm done, Max! You approach them after feeling like you've stretched enough. Good work, Cassian. I saw you stretching by yourself. Not bad. Th thanks! He smiled while still blushing. So, are you done with yours? Yes, we should prepare for our schedule today. Go wash up, Cassie, and then we meet at the lobby. Uh, Alright. You headed to the public washroom for the time being. On your way, you could see a structure being assembled on the right side of the field. You haven't seen anything like it before, but you assumed it was some kind of stage. Huh, is there going to be a concert here? You headed back to the lobby after freshening up and saw the other two already there chatting. I'm back! <laughs> Welcome back! Now let's go, let's go get something, shall we? Now let's get going, shall we? Took you long enough. S sorry, the water feels nice after all the exercise. Yeah, I can hear you still playing with the water on my way out. S sorry. Heh. <laughs> Heh, it's alright. So, you ready for your second patrol, Cassian? Who's messaging me? How dare you? <laughs> yep, I'm ready. We're, I'm ready. Where are we going? Outside again, okay. The usual route. First, we visit the mines, and we're gonna do the guardian. Then we're gonna go to the guardian crystal. How about you, Toby? Me? I'm going to the mines with you guys. After that, I'm gonna go around the harbor. New shipments from Hainan are coming in for the festival, so I'm tasked with keeping an eye on them. Right. I will tag along if I can, but there's but there's been some suspicious activity near the crystal. I need to make another round there. Yeah, I saw your report. It's quite concerning. Uh, what's Hainan? Oh, it's an island country overseas north from here. They're well known for their flowers and seafood products. <laughs> oh, their perfumes are probably the best. And don't forget the mountain borax. The meat is just out of this world. I heard they feed alcohol and massage the borax every night to make the meat more succulent and tender. Nah, surely those are just rumors, though. Though the meat is pretty good indeed. I'm sure Kay will bring the best out of the fresh produce. <laughs> True. Can't wait for Sunday to come. What's on Sunday? Festival of Star. It's a sporting event celebrated once every four years. They used to do this every year to recruit the best warriors to fight the evil king, but since the Guardian Crystal is up, the demand for seasoned warriors decreased. I like this music. Yeah, they only need mercenaries like us down. The recruitment event slowly became a, a sport festival. Max here was last season's champion. Oh, really? That's impressive, Max. Well, thanks. I work hard to no be number one, though I almost lost to Rye. Yeah, he lost to you by, what, three points? Pretty close call if you ask me. Heh, <laughs> indeed it was. It was exciting at the very least. Max chuckled, wagging his tail. I see. So will you join again this year, Max? Of course I will, and I will win it again. I talked with Rye this morning, and he said he's going to enter the game as well. I bet he's training with that friend of his right now. The one from Atlantia? Yeah, that one. Atlantia? Ah, well, it's an underwater city northwest of Hainan. Most of the people there are aquatic. They also use water magic to walk on land. So, Ray's friend is a... A species? A shark. Mm, sorry, that was Max. A species? A shark. Oh, well. What? Are you scared? Well, y yeah, but not really. Uh, it's just I'm a bit afraid of the depths. Like, I don't like the darkness of deep waters. It's very unsettling. Yeah, I'm right with you there, buddy. Like, there could be some giant monster that drags you down and drowns you. You're a weird one, Cassian. Do you actually live under a rock? You never even you never heard of Tannin. You never heard of Atlantia. What are you, an alien from another dimension? Hey now, he's from the countryside, Toby. You remember Alyssa? He's been living with her for some time. All right, so it doesn't explain why you lack a certain knowledge, though. Toby eyed you suspiciously. Come on, Toby, leave him be. Let's just get going. Why are you guys keeping that from Toby? Oh. Oh, is Toby possibly untrustworthy? Interesting. Max quickly changed the topic and started talking about the sports event as you made it to the mine. Something about the people he used to compete with in the past. You let out a sigh of relief as Toby seemed to drop his suspicion towards you for now. 
That was such a cool interior. Nothing seemed to be out of the ordinary after you made a round through the facility. Not soon after, Toby said goodbye and left for the harbor while you two stayed. Well, nothing suspicious here, I suppose, unlike last time. Last time it was Toby who spied on us, Cassian. Yeah, it spooked me real good. Heh, <laughs> not me though, I already knew it was him. Really? How did you know? I can sense people, that's one of my abilities. Well, family ability. The Silver Banes can sense other people's presence through their magic, through their, through their ma magi, magi, mage, through their mad mage signature energy. Since I've been with Toby for a long time, I can instantly recognize his energy. Ah, how about me? You're quite peculiar, Cassian. I can barely sense anything coming from you. So I don't have any of those energies. Apparently, we need to see Alex's result to be certain. It was already noon when you arrived at the park. Max promptly led you to the same food vendor as your stomach as your stomach made an audible growl. What do you want, Cassian? The usuals, or would you fancy something else? They sell more than just meat buns. There are meat skewers, too. Uh, meat buns and skewers sounds good. I'll have both of them, then. Alright, how many? Uh, two meat buns and ten skewers, maybe. Is that okay? Of course that's okay. In fact, let's add three more buns and five skewers for you. That's quite a lot. Thanks, Max. You're welcome. Now wait for a moment. You waited for some time on the bench and beside the stall. You can smell the grilled meat skewers wafting from the stall. The sweet and savory scent makes your stomach rumble. You took a deep breath. It's a very peaceful day. The sun is shining. The birds are singing. On a day like this, it's very nice to be outside and just enjoy the atmosphere. The gleam from the guardian crystals casts a colorful light onto the surroundings. And combined with gentle hums, it feels like you're in another world. Enjoying the view? Sorry to make you wait, Cassian. Here, take yours first. Careful now, it's hot. I'll get the mi I'll go get mine. Max placed the food on your lap as he went back to grab his. Afterwards, he sat beside you and started munching on his meat buns. It's fine. I was feeling a little drowsy, actually. You took a bite on your bun after finishing a few skewers. I can't blame you. On a perfect day like this, even I would love to just lay down and sleep. Many people visit this park every day to enjoy the view with their family, loved ones, and are even alone. There's a place for everyone here. Is that why you became a mercenary? Pretty much. It's a peaceful town. People here shouldn't know about the smuggled nether crystals. If they knew, chaos would ensue and the peace would be broken. I wanted to be the best mercenary so I can keep the peace, so I can protect their smiles. It might not seem like it's not, not, it might not seem much, patrolling and chasing burglars and smugglers, but I'll do anything to keep this place safe. Whoa, that's very noble of you, Max. Thanks, Cassian. He looked at the canine, who seemed to have his sad, the sad smile on his face again. He decided to shift the conversation. Um, have you talked to Ray, Max? Yeah, I told you I talked to him this morning, right? I settled things with him. The thing is, he and I used to bicker and fight all the time, even way back when we were still in the academy. We will fight a lot, but it doesn't last long. Usually when we fight, we'll talk normally again the next day. People will look at us strangely because of it. Huh. <laughs> You were in the academy with Ray? Are, are you classmates? Yeah, we're both in the same class. Me, Ray, Cody, and Alex. Cody was a senior in our class. He didn't pass the graduation exams a couple times, so even though he's older, he's in the same class as ours. Alex, on the other hand, got in with a recommendation from his parents. He's a smart guy, likes to invent stuff. But his attitude drove everyone away from him. It seems like he's been like that since he was born, huh? Heh, <laughs> one might say that, though. Alex was a more gentle soul back then. He's just very annoying, and others... He's just very annoying to others because he would not shut up about sciencey stuff. Oh, really? He was less rude back then? Yeah, but everything changed. What happened? Something horrible. He fell silent all of a sudden. It changed us. We used to be on the same team, on the same page. But when that happened, it changed us all. It's, it's alright, Max. You don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. No, it's okay. It's all in the past, and we can't let our past chain us down. He stood up after finishing his last skewer. Hmm. I'm stuffed. What about you, Cassian? Yep. Tell me about it. That was a pretty filling meal. Thank you for the food, Max. No problem. So, shall we continue patrolling? Yeah, let's go. Hmm, excuse me. You must be Sir Max, right? Oh, dear. Max admirer. Oh, boy. You notice someone peculiar approaching Max. You better be fucking careful. From a brief glance, you could see they dressed casually like most other people in the city, though the patterns on their outfit do make them stand out quite a bit. That I am. Wow! Hmm? Ha, sorry, it's just that I'm actually a big admirer of yours, sir. I just didn't expect to see you around here today. Well, I'm just on patrol duty as per usual. 
Anyhow, well met. How may I be of your how may I be of service? Can I have your autograph? Oh, sure thing. Where do you want me to sign it? Here, please. They quickly handed Max their pen and had out their sleeves as he left the, as he left his signature. Uh oh. There you go. I see you're wearing one of those guild uniforms. Did you get it from the last festival? Now that Max said it, you did notice that the emblems on their outfit look quite familiar. Some sort of guild merchandise, perhaps? Y yes, actually. And speaking of which, are you attending this festival as well? Naturally. You can count on me to snatch that championship yet again. Sweet! I can't wait to watch you perform on stage again. <clears throat> Anyways, I won't interrupt your duty any longer, sir. Thanks again, and have a nice day. Huh, <laughs> likewise. They were ever so quick to leave as soon as Max gave them a curtsy bow. For a brief moment, you could have sworn seeing them kissing their sleeves repeatedly, but maybe you're just imagining things. Oh dear, Max has got some... Uh, I thought that was more sinister, but now that that little detail has come out, it seems like he's just got a fan club. Max fan club. Oh boy. Whoa. Or a whoa, if you prefer. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Also, the channel is now reliably hitting 2,000 two thousand or over views a day. That is crazy, guys. We're getting between 14,000 to like 18,000 views a week. That's that's nuts. That That's crazy. You guys are crazy. You're insane. How could you? <laughs> but no, guys, thank you so much for the support and many more years of content coming for you. Bye, guys. I love you all. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.